Where are the organs of equilibrium located? The organs of equilibrium are located in the inner ear. The otolith organs are located in the vestibule of the membranous labyrinth. They consist of sheets of hair cells covered by a membrane that contains otoliths, ear stones, which are calcium carbonate crystals. The otolith organs sense linear acceleration of the head in any direction. Such as acceleration due to changing the position of your head relative to gravity or acceleration in a car or amusement ride. The inner ear also contains horizontal, posterior, and anterior semicircular canals, which sense angular motions, acceleration, of the head. Each semicircular canal has a specialized sensory region that contains hair cells. And each canal is important for sensing rotation of the head in a different primary direction. For example, the horizontal semicircular canal receptors are sensitive to rotating the head leftward and rightward. Where are the organs of equilibrium located? The organs of equilibrium are located in the inner ear. The otolith organs are located in the vestibule of the membranous labyrinth. They consist of sheets of hair cells covered by a membrane that contains otoliths ear stones, which are calcium carbonate crystals. The otolith organs sense linear acceleration of the head in any direction, such as acceleration due to changing the position of your head relative to gravity or acceleration in a car or amusement ride. The inner ear also contains horizontal, posterior, and anterior semicircular canals, which sense angular motions, acceleration, of the head. Each semicircular canal has a specialized sensory region that contains hair cells. And each canal is important for sensing rotation of the head in a different primary direction. For example, the horizontal semicircular canal receptors are sensitive to rotating the head leftward and rightward. What is Meniere's disease? Meniere's disease, named after Prosper Meniere, 1799-1862, who first described it in 1861, is a disorder. Characterized by recurring attacks of disabling vertigo, a whirling sensation, hearing loss, and tinnitus. It is thought to be caused by an imbalance in the fluid that is normally present in the inner ear. Either an increase in the production of inner ear fluid or a decrease in its reabsorption results in an imbalance of fluid, but why this happens is not known. It most often occurs in middle age and is more common in men than women. What is Meniere's disease? Meniere's disease, named after Prosper Meniere, 1799-1862, who 
who first described it in 1861, is a disorder. Characterized by recurring attacks of disabling vertigo, a whirling sensation, hearing loss, and tinnitus. It is thought to be caused by an imbalance in the fluid that is normally present in the inner ear. Either an increase in the production of inner ear fluid or a decrease in its reabsorption results in an imbalance of fluid, but why this happens is not known. It most often occurs in middle age and is more common in men than women. What is motion sickness? Motion sickness, also known as car, sea, train, or air sickness, occurs when the body is subjected to accelerations of movement in different directions or under conditions where visual contact with the actual outside horizon is lost. The brain receives contradictory information from its motion sensors such as the eyes or semicircular canals in the middle ears that provide information about body position. Symptoms include dizziness, fatigue, and nausea, which may progress to vomiting. Prevention is best accomplished by seeking areas of lesser movement in an interior location of a ship or by facing forward and looking outside an airplane. Various prescription and over-the-counter medications are available that may prevent or limit the symptoms of motion sickness. What is motion sickness? Motion sickness, also known as car, sea, train, or air sickness, occurs when the body is subjected to accelerations of movement in different directions or under conditions where visual contact with the actual outside horizon is lost. The brain receives contradictory information from its motion sensors such as the eyes or semicircular canals in the middle ears that provide information about body position. Symptoms include dizziness, fatigue, and nausea, which may progress to vomiting. Prevention is best accomplished by seeking areas of lesser movement in an interior location of a ship or by facing forward and looking outside an airplane. Various prescription and over-the-counter medications are available that may prevent or limit the symptoms of motion sickness. What is cerumen? Cerumen is an oily, fatty substance produced by the ceruminous glands in the outer portion of the ear canal. This compound is commonly referred to as earwax and, together with hairs in the auditory canal, helps prevent foreign objects from reaching the delicate eardrum. Dust, dirt, bacteria, fungi and other foreign dangers to the body all stick to the wax and do not enter the ear. Ear wax also contains a special enzyme, lysozyme, which breaks down the cell walls of bacteria. What is cerumen?
Cerumen is an oily, fatty substance produced by the ceruminous glands in the outer portion of the ear canal. This compound is commonly referred to as earwax and, together with hairs in the auditory canal, helps prevent foreign objects from reaching the delicate eardrum. Dust, dirt, bacteria, fungi, and other foreign dangers to the body all stick to the wax and do not enter the ear. Ear wax also contains a special enzyme, lysozyme, which breaks down the cell walls of bacteria. Should ear wax be removed? In most individuals, the ear canal is self-cleansing and there is no need to remove ear wax. However, ear wax may be impacted due to poor attempts at cleaning the ear. In such cases, the impacted ear wax should be removed by a healthcare professional. Should ear wax be removed? In most individuals, the ear canal is self-cleansing and there is no need to remove ear wax. However, ear wax may be impacted due to poor attempts at cleaning the ear. In such cases, the impacted ear wax should be removed by a healthcare professional. Do the eyes grow like other organs? Unlike most other organs, the eyes do not grow very much from infancy to adulthood. The average diameter of the eyeball is about 0.68 inches. 17 millimeters at birth and 0.84 inches, 21 millimeters, in adulthood. However, since new lens fibers are produced throughout life, the thickness of the lens varies with age. At birth, the thickness measures from 0.14 inches, 3.5 millimeters, to 0.16 inches, 4 millimeters. And at age 95 it may be 0.19 inches, 4.75 millimeters, to 0.20 inches, 5 millimeters, thick. Do the eyes grow like other organs? Unlike most other organs, the eyes do not grow very much from infancy to adulthood. The average diameter of the eyeball is about 0.68 inches. 17 millimeters, at birth and 0.84 inches, 21 millimeters, in adulthood. However, since new lens fibers are produced throughout life, the thickness of the lens varies with age. At birth, the thickness measures from 0.14 inches, 3.5 millimeters, to 0.16 inches, 4 millimeters. And at age 95 it may be 0.19 inches, 4.75 millimeters, to 0.20 inches, 5 millimeters, thick. What determines eye color?
Variations in eye color range from light blue to dark brown and are inherited. Eye color is chiefly determined by the amount and distribution of melanin within the irises. If melanin is present only in the epithelial cells that cover the posterior surface of the iris, the iris appears blue. When this condition exists together with denser than usual tissue within the body of the iris, the eye color looks gray. When melanin is present within the body of the iris, as well as the epithelial covering, the iris appears brown. What determines eye color? Variations in eye color range from light blue to dark brown and are inherited. Eye color is chiefly determined by the amount and distribution of melanin within the irises. If melanin is present only in the epithelial cells that cover the posterior surface of the iris, the iris appears blue. When this condition exists together with denser than usual tissue within the body of the iris, the eye color looks gray. When melanin is present within the body of the iris, as well as the epithelial covering, the iris appears brown. What causes an individual to have eyes with different colors? Heterochromia is a condition in which one iris is a different color from the other iris. This condition, relatively rare in humans, is usually inherited though it may be caused by disease or injury. In some cases, one part of one iris is a different color from the rest of the iris. A condition known as partial or sectoral heterochromia. What causes an individual to have eyes with different colors? Heterochromia is a condition in which one iris is a different color from the other iris. This condition, relatively rare in humans, is usually inherited though it may be caused by disease or injury. In some cases, one part of one iris is a different color from the rest of the iris. A condition known as partial or sectoral heterochromia. What determines eye color? Variations in eye color range from light blue to dark brown and are inherited. Eye color is chiefly determined by the amount and distribution of melanin within the irises. If melanin is present only in the epithelial cells that cover the posterior surface of the iris, the iris appears blue. When this condition exists together with denser than usual tissue within the body of the iris, the eye color looks gray. When melanin is present within the body of the iris, as well as the epithelial covering, the iris appears brown.
What is anosmia? Anosmia is a partial or complete loss of smell, either on a temporary basis or permanently. It may result from a variety of factors, including inflammation of the nasal cavity lining due to a respiratory infection. Excessive tobacco smoking, or from the use of certain drugs such as cocaine. In young people, the loss of smell is most often linked to a viral infection. While in the elderly, it more commonly follows a head injury. Which nerve is responsible for carpal tunnel syndrome? The median nerve controls sensations to the palm side of the thumb and fingers, although not the little finger. As well as impulses to some small muscles in the hand that allow the fingers and thumb to move. Carpal tunnel syndrome occurs when the median nerve, which runs from the forearm into the hand, becomes pressed or squeezed at the wrist. The carpal tunnel, a narrow, rigid passageway of ligament and bones at the base of the hand, houses the median nerve and tendons. At times thickening from irritated tendons or other swelling. Narrows the tunnel and causes the median nerve to be compressed. Carpal tunnel syndrome is characterized by pain, weakness, or numbness in the hand and wrist, often radiating up the arm. According to the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke, Initial treatment of carpal tunnel syndrome includes resting the affected hand and wrist for a minimum of two weeks. Nonsteroidal, anti-inflammatory drugs may be used to ease the pain. Ice and corticosteroids may relieve the swelling and pressure on the nerve. If symptoms persist, surgery may be required to sever the band of tissue around the wrist and reduce pressure on the median nerve. How do the neural pathways of the autonomic nervous system differ from the somatic nervous system? In the somatic nervous system, the myelinated axon of a motor neuron extends directly from the central nervous system to the effector, E. G. Skeletal muscle. Neural pathways in the autonomic nervous system always consist of two neurons. The first neuron, the preganglionic neuron, has its cell body in the central nervous system. Its myelinated axon extends from the central nervous system to an autonomic ganglion or junction, where it synapses with a second neuron. The second neuron, the postganglionic neuron, is in the peripheral nervous system. How are spinal nerves attached to the spinal cord? Spinal nerves divide in the vertebral canal into two branches, the dorsal root and the ventral root. The dorsal root, which is the posterior branch, contains the axons of sensory neurons that bring information to the spinal cord. The ventral root, which is the anterior branch, 
contains the axons of motor neurons that carry commands to muscles or glands. Therefore, each spinal nerve is considered a mixed nerve with both sensory and motor neurons. What are the special organs of taste? The special organs of taste are the taste buds located primarily on the surface of the tongue. Where they are associated with tiny elevations called papillae surrounded by deep folds. A taste bud is a cluster of approximately 100 taste cells representing all taste sensations and 100 supporting cells that separate the taste cells. Taste buds can also be found on the roof of the mouth and in the throat. An adult has approximately 10,000 taste buds. How do taste buds function? The taste cells that comprise each taste bud act as receptors. Taste cells and adjacent epithelial cells comprise a spherical structure. With small projections called taste hairs that protrude from the taste cells. The taste hairs are the sensitive part of each receptor cell. A network of nerve fibers surrounds and connects all of the taste cells. Stimulation of a receptor cell triggers an impulse on a nearby nerve fiber. And the impulse then travels to the brain via a cranial nerve for interpretation. Can all factory cells be replaced? Yes, injured olfactory cells may be replaced. Small basal cells, located in the olfactory epithelial layer, are capable of dividing and differentiating into olfactory receptor cells. These cells act as a group of neural stem cells. What is Meniere's disease? Meniere's disease, named after Prosper Meniere, 1799-1862, who first described it in 1861, is a disorder. Characterized by recurring attacks of disabling vertigo, a whirling sensation, hearing loss, and tinnitus. It is thought to be caused by an imbalance in the fluid that is normally present in the inner ear. Either an increase in the production of inner ear fluid or a decrease in its reabsorption results in an imbalance of fluid, but why this happens is not known. It most often occurs in middle age and is more common in men than women. Are certain areas of the tongue associated with a particular taste sensation? All taste buds are able to detect each of the four basic taste sensations. However, each taste bud is usually most sensitive to one type of taste stimuli. The stimulus. Type to which each taste bud responds most strongly is related to its position on the tongue. 
sweet receptors are concentrated at the tip of the tongue. While sour receptors are more common at the sides of the tongue. Salt receptors occur most frequently at the tip and front edges of the tongue. Bitter receptors are most numerous at the back of the tongue. Which diseases can be detected by smell? Many diseases give off a characteristic odor all their own. Some physicians can detect various diseases by smelling their patients. How is the autonomic nervous system organized? The autonomic nervous system consists of two divisions. The sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic division is often called the fight or flight system because it usually stimulates tissue metabolism, increases alertness, and generally prepares the body to deal with emergencies. The parasympathetic division is considered the rest and repose division because it conserves energy and promotes sedentary activities, such as digestion. In general, both the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions innervate the target cells. What is motion sickness? Motion sickness also known as car, sea, train, or air sickness, occurs when the body is subjected to accelerations of movement in different directions or under conditions where visual contact with the actual outside horizon is lost. The brain receives contradictory information from its motion sensors such as the eyes or semicircular canals in the middle ears that provide information about body position. Symptoms include dizziness, fatigue, and nausea, which may progress to vomiting. Prevention is best accomplished by seeking areas of lesser movement in an interior location of a ship or by facing forward and looking outside an airplane. Various prescription and over-the-counter medications are available that may prevent or limit the symptoms of motion sickness. What are the two types of deafness? The two types of deafness are conduction deafness and sensorineural, or perceptive, deafness. In conduction deafness, the transmission of sound waves through the middle ear is impaired. In sensorineural deafness, the transmission of nerve impulses anywhere. From the cochlea to the auditory cortex of the brain is impaired. Which infection may affect the skin of a single dermatome? Shingles, or herpes zoster, appears as a painful rash on the skin. 
corresponding to the sensory nerve in the area of a single dermatome. The virus is the same one that causes chicken pox. If someone has chicken pox as a child, the virus may lay dormant in the nerve roots of the spinal nerves for decades. If reactivated, the virus will present itself as shingles. Where are the organs of equilibrium located? The organs of equilibrium are located in the inner ear. The otolith organs are located in the vestibule of the membranous labyrinth. They consist of sheets of hair cells covered by a membrane that contains otoliths, ear stones, which are calcium carbonate crystals. The otolith organs sense linear acceleration of the head in any direction, such as acceleration due to changing the position of your head relative to gravity or acceleration in a car or amusement ride. The inner ear also contains horizontal, posterior, and anterior semicircular canals, which sense angular motions, acceleration, of the head. Each semicircular canal has a specialized sensory region that contains hair cells. And each canal is important for sensing rotation of the head in a different primary direction. For example, the horizontal semicircular canal receptors are sensitive to rotating the head leftward and rightward. What causes sciatica? Sciatica is caused by compression of the sciatic nerve, such as from a herniated disc or even from sitting for extended periods of time with a wallet in the back pocket. The pain usually subsides after a few weeks, although over-the-counter pain relievers may be helpful. What is tinnitus? Tinnitus is the perception of sound in the ears or head where no external source is present. In almost all cases, tinnitus is a subjective noise. Meaning that only the person who has tinnitus can hear it. It is often referred to as ringing in the ears. Persistent tinnitus usually indicates the presence of hearing loss. The exact cause of tinnitus is not known, but there are several likely sources all of which are known to trigger or worsen the condition. They include noise-induced hearing loss, wax buildup in the ear canal, medicines that are toxic to the ear, ear or sinus infections, jaw misalignment, and head and neck trauma. Do humans or bloodhounds have a keener sense of smell? Humans smell the world using about 12 million olfactory receptor cells. Whereas bloodhounds have 4 billion such cells and, therefore, a much better sense of smell. For example, the trace of sweat that seeps through shoes and is left in footprints 
is a million times more powerful than the bloodhound needs to track down someone. Why is it possible to smell, or taste, medications, such as eye drops that have been placed in the eyes? Medications placed in the eyes can pass through the nasolacrimal duct into the nasal cavity, where their odor can be detected. Because much of our taste sensation is actually smell, the medication is perceived to have a taste. What causes an individual to have eyes with different colors? Heterochromia is a condition in which one iris is a different color from the other iris. This condition, relatively rare in humans, is usually inherited though it may be caused by disease or injury. In some cases, one part of one iris is a different color from the rest of the iris. A condition known as partial or sectoral heterochromia. What are some causes of hearing loss and deafness? Deafness may be caused by dysfunction of either the sound transmitting mechanism of the outer, middle, or inner ear, or the sound receiving mechanism of the inner ear. Causes of dysfunction include disease, toxic exposure, injury, including exposure to loud noise such as heavily amplified music through headphones, or genetic disorders. What is cerumen? Cerumen is an oily, fatty substance produced by the ceruminous glands in the outer portion of the ear canal. This compound is commonly referred to as earwax and, together with hairs in the auditory canal, helps prevent foreign objects from reaching the delicate eardrum. Dust, dirt, bacteria, fungi, and other foreign dangers to the body all stick to the wax and do not enter the ear. Ear wax also contains a special enzyme, lysozyme, which breaks down the cell walls of bacteria. What is the average lifespan of a human taste bud? Each taste bud lives for 7 to 10 days. Do the eyes grow like other organs? Unlike most other organs, the eyes do not grow very much from infancy to adulthood. The average diameter of the eyeball is about 0.68 inches. 17 mm, at birth and 0.84 inches, 21 mm, in adulthood. However, since new lens fibers are produced throughout life, the thickness of the lens varies with age. At birth, 
the thickness measures from 0.14 inches, 3.5 millimeters, to 0.16 inches, 4 millimeters. And at age 95 it may be 0.19 inches, 4.75 millimeters, to 0.20 inches, 5 millimeters, thick. How does the effect of sympathetic innervation on an organ differ from the effect of parasympathetic innervation? Many organs are innervated by both the sympathetic and parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. Which is the longest spinal nerve? The longest spinal nerve is the tibial nerve, which averages 20 inches, 50 centimeters, long. What is Umami? Umami, a new taste described by the Japanese, is elicited by the amino acid glutamate, which appears to be responsible for the beef taste of steak, the tang of aging cheese, and the flavor of message, the food additive monosodium glutamate. The umami receptors are located in the pharynx. What is presbycusis? Presbycusis is the scientific name for age-related sensorineural hearing loss. The first symptom is an inability to hear sounds at the highest frequencies and can occur as early as age 20. Around age 60. There is considerable variation in how well people hear. Some have had significant loss of hearing since age 50. While others have no hearing problems into their 90s. In general, men seem to experience hearing loss more often and more severely than women. One explanation for this difference may be that men's occupations are usually associated with prolonged exposure to louder noises. How does aging affect the sense of smell? Since the olfactory receptor neurons are exposed to the external environment, they are subject to damage over time. People typically experience a progressive diminishing of olfactory sense with age. In fact, it is estimated that an individual loses about 1% of the olfactory receptors every year. What is a plexus? A plexus, from the Latin plectora, meaning braid, is an interwoven network of spinal nerves. There are four major plex uses on each side of the body, one, the cervical plexus innervates the muscles of the neck. The skin of the neck, the back of the head, 
and the diaphragm muscle. 2. The brachial plexus innervates the shoulder and upper limb. 3. The lumbar plexus innervates the muscles and skin of the abdominal wall. And 4. The sacral plexus innervates the buttocks and lower limbs. The nerves then divide into smaller branches. Should earwax be removed? In most individuals, the ear canal is self-cleansing and there is no need to remove earwax. However, earwax may be impacted due to poor attempts at cleaning the ear. In such cases, the impacted earwax should be removed by a healthcare professional. How many basic taste sensations are recognized? It has been believed generally that there are only four basic taste sensations. Sweet, sour, salty, and bitter. Some other taste sensations that are frequently mentioned are alkaline, metallic, and umami, which detects monosodium glutamate, message, a flavor enhancer often used in Chinese cooking. Different tastes are experienced by combining the four basic taste sensations. Some individuals claim that with the senses of smell and taste working together, an individual can experience 10,000 different combinations. How does the somatic nervous system differ from the autonomic nervous system? The table below explains the main differences between the somatic and autonomic nervous systems. What does the autonomic nervous system regulate? The autonomic nervous system regulates involuntary activity, which is not controlled on a conscious level. Specifically, the autonomic nervous system innervates the activity of smooth muscle cardiac muscle, and glands of the body. What are dermatomes? Dermatoms, from the Greek derma, meaning skin, and tomos meaning cutting, are areas on the skin surface supplied by an individual spinal nerve. What part of the eye is known as the white of the eye? The sclera, or tough outer coat, is the white of the eye. What part of the eye is known as the white of the eye? The sclera, or tough outer coat, is the white of the eye.
What are the floaters that move around on the eye? Floaters are semi-transparent specks perceived to be floating in the field of vision. Some originate with red blood cells that have leaked out of the retina. The blood cells swell into spheres, some forming strings, and float around the areas of the retina. Others are shadows caused by the microscopic structures in the vitreous humor. A jelly-like substructure located behind the retina. A sudden appearance of a cloud of dark floaters. If accompanied by bright light flashes, could indicate retinal detachment. What are the floaters that move around on the eye? Floaters are semi-transparent specks perceived to be floating in the field of vision. Some originate with red blood cells that have leaked out of the retina. The blood cells swell into spheres, some forming strings, and float around the areas of the retina. Others are shadows caused by the microscopic structures in the vitreous humor. A jelly-like substructure located behind the retina. A sudden appearance of a cloud of dark floaters. If accompanied by bright light flashes, could indicate retinal detachment. How frequently are the eye muscles used? Eye muscles may move up to 100,000 times in a 24-hour period. To give the legs the equivalent exercise would require 50 miles of walking. The eye muscles contain a special form of very rapidly contracting myosin so that they can move rapidly but not fatigue. How frequently are the eye muscles used? Eye muscles may move up to 100,000 times in a 24-hour period. To give the legs the equivalent exercise would require 50 miles of walking. The eye muscles contain a special form of very rapidly contracting myosin so that they can move rapidly but not fatigue. What are the two layers of the retina? The two layers that comprise the retina are an outer pigmented layer called the pigment epithelium which adheres to the choroid, and an inner layer of nerve tissue called the sensory, or neural, retina. The inner layer of nerve tissue consists of three separate layers of neurons. The first and closest to the choroid is a layer of sensory receptors. The photoreceptor cells called rods and cones, and various other neurons. Next is a layer of bipolar neurons. The nerve cells that receive impulses generated by the rod and cone cells. The third or inner layer consists of ganglionic neurons attached directly to the optic nerve. 
diabetic retinopathy is the major cause of blindness in the United States among adults ages. 20 to 65. The high blood sugar level in diabetes weakens blood vessel walls in the retina and chaoids, which increases susceptibility to hemorrhaging, scarring, and retinal detachment. What are the two layers of the retina? The two layers that comprise the retina are an outer pigmented layer called the pigment epithelium, which adheres to the choroid, and an inner layer of nerve tissue called the sensory, or neural, retina. The inner layer of nerve tissue consists of three separate layers of neurons. The first and closest to the choroid is a layer of sensory receptors. The photoreceptor cells called rods and cones, and various other neurons. Next is a layer of bipolar neurons. The nerve cells that receive impulses generated by the rod and cone cells. The third or inner layer consists of ganglionic neurons attached directly to the optic nerve. Diabetic retinopathy is the major cause of blindness in the United States among adults ages. 20 to 65. The high blood sugar level in diabetes weakens blood vessel walls in the retina and chaoids, which increases susceptibility to hemorrhaging, scarring, and retinal detachment. What is the difference in the functions of the rods and cones found in the eyes? Rods and cones are photoreceptor cells that convert light first into chemical energy and then into electrical energy for transmission to the vision centers of the brain via the optic nerve. Rods are specialized for vision in dim light, they cannot detect color. But they are the first receptors to detect movement and register shapes. There are about 125 million rods in a human eye. They contain a pigment called rhodopsin. Cones provide acute vision, functioning best in bright daylight. They allow us to see colors and fine detail. Cones are divided into three different types that contain cyanolabe, chlorolabe, or erythrolabe. These photopigments absorb wavelengths in the short, blue, middle, green, and long, red, ranges, respectively. There are about 7 million cones in each eye. What is the difference in the functions of the rods and cones found in the eyes? Rods and cones are photoreceptor cells that convert light first into chemical energy and then into electrical energy for transmission to the vision centers of the brain via the optic nerve. Rods are specialized for vision in dim light, they cannot detect color. But they are the first receptors to detect movement and register shapes. There are about 125 million rods in a human eye. They contain a pigment called rhodopsin. Cones provide acute vision, functioning best in bright daylight. 
they allow us to see colors and fine detail. Cones are divided into three different types that contain cyanolabe, chlorolabe, or erythrolabe. These photopigments absorb wavelengths in the short, blue, middle, green, and long, red, ranges, respectively. There are about 7 million cones in each eye. How long does it take for a person to adapt to dim light? Rods give us vision in dim light but not in color and not with sharp detail. They are hundreds of times more sensitive to light than cones. Letting us detect shape and movement in dim light. This type of photoreceptor takes about 15 minutes to fully adapt to very dim light. How long does it take for a person to adapt to dim light? Rods give us vision in dim light but not in color and not with sharp detail. They are hundreds of times more sensitive to light than cones. Letting us detect shape and movement in dim light. This type of photoreceptor takes about 15 minutes to fully adapt to very dim light. Is night blindness dangerous or serious? Night blindness is a condition in which the rods in the retina are seriously damaged due to vitamin A deficiency. This results in the inability to drive safely at night. Vitamin A supplements can reverse this condition if administered before degeneration of the rods. Is night blindness dangerous or serious? Night blindness is a condition in which the rods in the retina are seriously damaged due to vitamin A deficiency. This results in the inability to drive safely at night. Vitamin A supplements can reverse this condition if administered before degeneration of the rods. What are the different types of cone cells in humans? Color perception depends on cones. Humans have three types of cones, blue, green, and red. Each contains a slightly different photopigment. Although the retinal portion of the pigment molecule is the same as in rhodopsin, the opsin protein differs slightly in each type of photoreceptor. Each type of cone responds to light within a range of wavelengths but is named for the ability of its pigment to absorb a wavelength more strongly than the other cones. Red light, for example, can be absorbed by all three types of cones. But those cones most sensitive to red act as red receptors. By comparing the relative responses of the three types of cones, 
the brain can detect colors of intermediate wavelengths. There will always be a dominant cone sending the electrical color-coded impulse to the brain. But the other two color cones will also be stimulated to some degree, even if it is a faint spark. These various and unlimited combinations are what make possible the million of shades of color we see. What are the different types of cone cells in humans? Color perception depends on cones. Humans have three types of cones, blue, green, and red. Each contains a slightly different photopigment. Although the retinal portion of the pigment molecule is the same as in rhodopsin, the opsin protein differs slightly in each type of photoreceptor. Each type of cone responds to light within a range of wavelengths but is named for the ability of its pigment to absorb a wavelength more strongly than the other cones. Red light, for example, can be absorbed by all three types of cones. But those cones most sensitive to red act as red receptors. By comparing the relative responses of the three types of cones, the brain can detect colors of intermediate wavelengths. There will always be a dominant cone sending the electrical color coded impulse to the brain. But the other two color cones will also be stimulated to some degree, even if it is a faint spark. These various and unlimited combinations are what make possible the million of shades of color we see. What are the three different cone pigments? The three different cone pigments are erythrolabe, chlorolabe, and cyanolabe. Erythrolabe is most sensitive to red light waves, chlorolabe is most sensitive to green light waves. And cyanolabe is most sensitive to blue light waves. What are the three different cone pigments? The three different cone pigments are erythrolabe, chlorolabe, and cyanolabe. Erythrolabe is most sensitive to red light waves, chlorolabe is most sensitive to green light waves. And cyanolabe is most sensitive to blue light waves. Are the three types of color cones present in equal quantities? In an individual with normal vision, the cone population consists of 16% blue cones, 10% green cones, and 74% red cones. Although their sensitivities overlap, each type is most sensitive to a specific portion of the visual spectrum. Are the three types of color cones present in equal quantities? In an individual with normal vision, 
the cone population consists of 16% blue cones. 10% green cones, and 74% red cones. Although their sensitivities overlap, each type is most sensitive to a specific portion of the visual spectrum. What causes color blindness? Color blindness is the inability to perceive one or more colors. This may involve complete or partial loss of color perception. Most forms of color blindness occur more frequently in males as an X-linked genetic disorder. Color blindness is actually a collection of several abnormalities of color vision. The most common form is a red-green blindness, which affects about 8% of the male population in the United States. Red blindness is the inability to see red as a distinct color, while green blindness is the inability to see green. A rare form of color blindness is the inability to see the color blue. What causes color blindness? Color blindness is the inability to perceive one or more colors. This may involve complete or partial loss of color perception. Most forms of color blindness occur more frequently in males as an X-linked genetic disorder. Color blindness is actually a collection of several abnormalities of color vision. The most common form is a red-green blindness which affects about 8% of the male population in the United States. Red blindness is the inability to see red as a distinct color, while green blindness is the inability to see green. A rare form of color blindness is the inability to see the color blue. How fast do photoreceptors respond? It takes 0.002 seconds for the brain to recognize an object after its light first enters the eyes. How fast do photoreceptors respond? It takes 0.002 seconds for the brain to recognize an object after its light first enters the eyes. What part of the eye is known as the white of the eye? The sclera, or tough outer coat, is the white of the eye. What is the auditory tube and its function? The auditory tube, eustachian tube, connects each middle ear to the throat. This tube conducts air between the tympanic cavity and the outside of the body by way of the throat and mouth.
It also helps maintain equal air pressure on both sides of the eardrum. Which is necessary for normal hearing. The function of the auditory tube can be experienced during rapid change in altitude. As a person moves from a high altitude to a lower one. The air pressure on the outside of the membrane becomes greater and greater. As a result, the eardrum may be pushed inward, out of its normal position, and hearing may be impaired. When the air pressure difference is great enough. Some air may force its way up through the auditory tube into the middle ear. This allows the pressure on both sides of the eardrum to equalize. And the drum moves back to its regular position. An individual usually hears a popping sound at this time, and normal hearing is restored. A reverse movement of air occurs when a person moves from a low altitude to a higher one. What is the labyrinth? The labyrinth is a complex system of chambers and tubes in the inner ear. There are actually two labyrinths in each ear, the osseous or bony labyrinth and the membranous labyrinth. The three regions of the bony labyrinth are the vestibule, the cochlea, and the semicircular canals. There are two membranous sacs within the vestibule, the saccule, and utricle. Which contain receptors that respond to linear acceleration, E. G, the pull of gravity, acceleration in a vehicle, and changes in head position. How frequently are the eye muscles used? Eye muscles may move up to 100,000 times in a 24-hour period. To give the legs the equivalent exercise would require 50 miles of walking. The eye muscles contain a special form of very rapidly contracting myosin so that they can move rapidly but not fatigue. Which areas of the brain are responsible for specific functions? Researchers know that certain areas of the brain are responsible for certain general functions. In 1909, the German physician and researcher Corbinian Broadman, 1868-1918, Published Vergleich and Lokalisation Slayer der Grosshirn Rinde in Ihren Prinzipien dargestellt auf Grün des Ellenbos. This treatise included maps of the localization of functions in the cerebral cortex. Broadman's maps are still used to depict the areas of cerebral cortex that are responsible for specific functions. What are the three bones in the middle ear? The three bones, or auditory ossicles, in the middle ear are the malleus, hammer, the incus, anvil, and stapes, stirrup. Tiny ligaments attach them to the wall of the tympanic cavity, and they are covered by mucous membranes. 
A special muscle, the stapedius, is attached to the stapes and can dampen its vibrations. These bones bridge the eardrum and the inner ear, transmitting vibrations. What are the two layers of the retina? The two layers that comprise the retina are an outer pigmented layer called the pigment epithelium, which adheres to the choroid, and an inner layer of nerve tissue called the sensory, or neural, retina. The inner layer of nerve tissue consists of three separate layers of neurons. The first and closest to the choroid is a layer of sensory receptors. The photoreceptor cells called rods and cones, and various other neurons. Next is a layer of bipolar neurons. The nerve cells that receive impulses generated by the rod and cone cells. The third or inner layer consists of ganglionic neurons attached directly to the optic nerve. Diabetic retinopathy is the major cause of blindness in the United States among adults ages. 20 to 65. The high blood sugar level in diabetes weakens blood vessel walls in the retina and choroids, which increases susceptibility to hemorrhaging, scarring, and retinal detachment. What are the basic stages of sensing sound? A sound wave is a vibration in the ear that enters the ear canal. The sound strikes the eardrum, causing it to vibrate. Behind the vibrating eardrum, in the middle ear, are three small bones that move in response to the eardrum. These bones transfer the vibrations to the cochlea. Traveling through the cochlear duct toward the auditory nerve. Nerve impulses travel to the brain, which translates them into a sound you can understand. What are the causes of aphasia? Aphasia is a language disorder that results from damage to portions of the brain that are responsible for language. Strokes are the most common cause of aphasia, although aphasia can also result from a brain tumor. Infection, head injury, or dementia that damages the brain. Individuals with aphasia have difficulty speaking both in producing words and complete sentence structure or understanding speech, or both. Depending on the severity of the aphasia, and the degree of permanent brain damage. Some patients regain their speech capabilities with little or no rehabilitation. In most cases, However, speech therapy is necessary to regain language capabilities. What word is used to describe sounds too low for humans to hear? Sound waves are alternating zones of high and low pressure traveling through air or water and characterized by their frequency or intensity. Frequency is measured in hertz, hertz, 
which represents cycles per second, CPS. The frequency range of human hearing is from 20 to 20,000 Hz. Sounds with a frequency lower than 20 Hz cannot be heard by humans and are referred to as infrasonic. Such signals start below 20 Hz. But can be detected at frequencies as low as a hundredth or even a thousandth of a Hz. Human ears are most sensitive to frequencies between 1,500 and 4,000 Hz. Within that range, an individual can distinguish frequencies that differ by only 2 or 3 Hz. What is the organ of Cordy? The organ of Cordy, located in the cochlear duct, is the auditory organ. It contains about 20,000 hearing receptor cells and many supporting cells. These receptor cells are called hair cells. The organ of Cordy sits on the basilar membrane. A flexible, fibrous structure on the floor of the cochlear duct. As a pressure wave travels through the cochlear duct it causes the basilar membrane to vibrate. The basilar membrane is narrow and stiff at the base of the cochlea, like the strings of a harp or piano used in playing the high notes, where it resonates in response to high frequency sound waves. The basilar membrane is wide and less stiff near the apex of the cochlea, like the strings of a harp or piano for the low notes. Where it resonates in response to lower frequency pressure waves. This resulting vibration causes the organ of cordy to vibrate, which is sensed by hair cells. Depending on the volume of the sound, either a few hairs move. As in the case of a soft sound, or many hairs move, as in the case of the loud sound. 